Are you a hair professional that finds a level seven and eight really challenging to tone? Or maybe you color your hair at home and you always end up feeling brassy. Well, this video is for you because I'm gonna get into how to toning on the level can make all the difference and give you great results every single time. Hello and welcome to the world of Craig. Yes, that's me, I'm Craig, and this is my channel where we get into all things hair and sometimes a little bit of beauty. If you're here for the first time, hello, and if you're coming back for another look, hello, I really appreciate you, thank you. Now, I get more DMs, comments, questions on a level seven and eight, toning out the warmth in a level seven and eight, what you may refer to as brassy. I don't really use that word because I find it to be a bit negative, but what you might call brassy. And that's exactly what we're going to cover in this video. Hair colour is a creative thing, but there is a science and a theory to it. And that's what we're going to get into in this video. But first of all, I want to show you a process. And that process in this video uses Shazy Q Glass because that's what I use a lot of. But these kind of rules, I'm not going to call them rules, but this theory applies to whatever brand of colour that you are using. And then once we've looked at this process, I'm going to show you some stuff using swatches because I love a swatch. Once we've been through that process and you've seen the results, I'm going to come back. Yes, I am. And we're going to go through that theory and I'm going to give you hard and fast kind of diagnostic points so that you can create formulas whether you're a hair pro or whether you colour your hair at home. But first up, let's have a look at that process. Now, of course, to look at hair colour theory, we need some swatches. And these I have pre-coloured using Shazy Q Gloss to sit around a level seven or eight. And you can see there's some gold and there's also some orange in there. We need some foil to paint our colour onto. So I'm just securing that down. And then I'm going to use one formula on one of my swatches, another formula on the other, and then I'm going to keep one as the control. I like to call this hair colour theory toning on the level. So there's a big clue there. On the left hand side, I'm going to be using Delicate Natural Shazy Q Gloss Level 10. And then on the right hand side, I'll be using two parts 8N and one part 8VB. The VB being violet blue. And remembering that these swatches sit somewhere around a level 7 to 8. So remember that toning on the level. So it's time to glove up because we always wear gloves when we come into contact with any hair colour, don't we? First of all, I'm going in with my 10N, my Delicate Natural, which has a soft violet blue background. Then on the other side, I've got two parts 8N and one part 8VB. And the VBs have violet and blue, but they're quite powerful in their tone and deposit. So that's perfect for neutralizing yellow and orange. Gloves off and it's processing time. On the left hand side, you can see that the 10N with its soft violet blue background has neutralized a tiny bit of the warmth already. And on the other side, the A10 and the 8VB is starting to do its job, but the direct dye in the color is slightly off-putting. It looks like it's going to be warm, but it won't be. Let's check in at 10 minutes of processing time. And you can see that both of the swatches look considerably darker. More on that later. It's worth mentioning here that yes, I'm using Shazy Q Gloss, but the principles of this hair color theory apply regardless of the line of color that you are using. I always recommend following manufacturer's guidelines for maximum deposit. So we're 20 minutes in and you can see that both of the swatches have changed. They really do look much darker than the original starting point. And the one on the right looks really dark, but there's good reason for that. A swift look at the damp swatches, remembering that when hair is wet, it can look up to two shades deeper or darker than when it's dry. Now let's see those dry results and what is quite a powerful visual. So here we have on the left hand side, the 10N and on the right hand side, the two parts 8N and one part 8VB. And that's the control swatch. So let's have a look at them side by side. The 10N, which was above the level, did some neutralizing, but not very much. Whereas the swatch that was on a level eight that had the extra violet and blue in has neutralized the warmth completely. Okay, back to me. So I'm back and that was the process. 
Quite incredible, right? I mean, I think you'll agree that's a very strong visual representation. Now we need to, and I, I know I covered it slightly in whilst we were looking at those swatches, but now we, I want to get into the kind of steps to how you choose what kind of toner you're going to use and the kind of results that you can expect. But first things first, and this is huge, and I've already been through it when you looked at the swatches, but if you only take one thing from this video, it's going to be this, and that is the more you cool hair colour down, the more warmth you neutralise, the darker and deeper it will look, okay? So the, the cooler something goes, the darker and deeper it will look. The warmer you leave a result, the lighter and brighter it will look. That's why if you're a hair professional, Sometimes if you tone something that's lifted to a level 10 and you tone it with a level nine and it's something that's cool, it actually looks very deep and dark. And that's why a lot of clients, or if you're doing your hair at home, if you like to be what I call a zingy blonde, something that's very bright and very reflective, that's the warmth that you can see. So if you only take one thing from this video, please let it be this. The cooler a formula, the more warmth you take out of the hair, the darker it will look, and the warmer the result is, the lighter and brighter it will look. Right, moving on. Now, this is kind of the crux of this entire process, okay? And this is about a decision that needs to be made. If you're a hair professional, it's about managing your client's expectations and talking to them, you know, having, communicating with them and finding out exactly about what the expectations are. And if you're doing your own hair at home, then this is about the kind of result that you want. But we know that cooler results look darker and lighter result, and sorry, warmer results will look lighter because they reflect the light. It's about how our eyes see colour. It's quite incredible to think that when something is cooler, it looks darker to us, and when something is warmer, it looks lighter to us. But you need to make a decision because if you really, really, really hate that warmth, and I get DMs and I get comments all the time where, my client hates that warmth, but they don't want to be any darker. Well, you can't have that. It's a trade-off. You need to decide whether you're happy to be slightly warm and still be brighter and lighter, you get it? Or you want all of the warmth gone, but you are going to look darker. You have to choose. You can't have both. You could go midway, if you like. You know, you could tone out some of the warmth, and keep some of it and therefore you don't look so deep. But if you want the coolest, flattest blonde, blonde, technically speaking, then, because a level seven and eight is classed as a blonde, if you want the coolest, flattest result, it's going to look darker. So you decide and you decide with your client or you decide if you're at home, but you do need to choose because you can't have it all, unfortunately, in this case. Now, as you heard me talking about during the swatching process, I talked about toning on the level. Now, this is a general term. It's, I don't know whether it's something that I came up with. I've been using it for a long time. I was talking about it only the other day in a class at the L'Oreal Academy when I was sharing one of my Shades EQ Gloss classes. If you're here in London, I have some more later on this year. You can find them on my Instagram, which is this, or it will be tagged down below in the description. They're all available on L'Oreal Access booking platforms, in-person classes, Woo woo. Now, I use that term toning on the level because that's exactly what it means. If you want to successfully neutralize warmth, you must tone on the level that you have lifted to or below. Having a formula of a toner, whatever brand of color that you're using, this is the same for any brand, of having a formula that is above the level that you lifted to will not give you very super cool results. So we're, now we're getting into the specifics of it and if you want all the warmth gone, you have to tone on the level or below it, okay? Toning above the level. For example, very briefly, before I, before I get onto what I'm gonna get onto, very briefly, I had a comment the other day that said, I lifted my hair to a level nine and I toned with a level 10 and I didn't get the result I wanted. Well, you won't because you lifted to a nine, you toned above the level 
and therefore you don't get enough pigment placed into the hair to give you the result that you want. So let's put these back on the screen. These are my friends. You've seen these before in other videos, or if you haven't, you're gonna be seeing more of these here on my channel. I've actually created a playlist that's all about toning, so you can go and check that out after this. But these charts are invaluable, and if you're a hair pro, I really do feel it's important that you know them off by heart. And if you're a consumer at home, you can find other examples of these on the internet if you want to you know, have a further look at them, or you could screenshot this. Maybe you wouldn't want to screenshot that, but you can screenshot that, this. Now this is a colour wheel, and this is a level chart. This is a level of lift. So these are the levels that your hair lifts to, okay? Go it's starting from deep at the bottom to light at the top, and then this is a colour wheel. And these are the only things you need and a, a pair of eyes that you can trust and trust what you see. It's important that you trust what you see. You know, obviously, if you're doing your hair at home, you don't have the knowledge and the experience, that's what these videos are for, but you don't have all that experience of trusting what you see, but you will over time. You know, it's something that develops over time. You're not gonna become a master at this overnight, but hopefully I can help you along the way. So, you've got your level chart, you've got your, um, you've got your color wheel, that's what it's called. And basically, for example, let's look at the levels here. You've lifted to that level eight, okay? And on this chart, you can see that the undertone in that level eight is yellow orange. So you want to go to the color wheel and look at what is opposite of yellow orange. And the opposite of yellow orange would be violet blue because you want the yellow to counter, sorry, you want the violet to counteract the yellow, lots of information, the violet to counteract the yellow, and you want the blue to counteract the orange. So you would formulate on a level eight with both violet and blue. It really is that simple. But I know that's a lot of information, so let's have another example. Now I've just watched that clip back and I was actually talking about a level seven, but it's important to mention that you know, hair always lifts slightly differently. So, and every head of hair is different. I know it's a lot, isn't it? But that is exactly how unique every human being is, hurrah. But sometimes I find that a level seven can be slightly more golden and less orange. And sometimes I find it's more orange and less golden. So we need to trust our eyes. But let's get into another example. So you've lifted somebody that's deep and dark or your own hair, very deep and dark, and they've only lifted to a level five. And I will just mention here that all of these underlying pigment charts are slightly different. Some brands have their own. You know, this is one I've used from the internet a few times, but they are all slightly different. So that's something else to take into consideration. Pulls up sleeves. Someone has lifted to a level five, which is exposed orange, as we can see on my lovely charts, on our lovely charts. So lifted to a level five, they have exposed orange. The opposite of orange is blue. But I want to mention here that blue is a very powerful pigment. So that's something you've got to consider. Blue and green are powerful pigments, the end. They just are. So I would suggest going in perhaps with a formula that's on a level five, that has, because we're toning on the level, remember, to get a very cool result. This is either yourself or a client who doesn't want to see any warmth. So you need to use a level five toner, whatever brand, and it needs to have some blue in it. I would only have some blue in to begin with, and then, and then perhaps a neutral, or a natural, and then see what kind of result you get from that, how much cancellation, neutralization, how cool the result is, and then go from there. Remembering that toning on the level with something that is cool will make the result look deeper and darker. So if they want to see no orange at all, or you want to see no orange at all, you can do that, but the result may well look darker. It's a trade-off. Do you want the coolness, or do you want to have a brighter, lighter result, but with some warmth? Brilliant. So to recap, and I've said it many times throughout this video, it's really straightforward. If you want, <coughs> no. So that's it, we're at the end of this diagnostic hair colour theory video, all about toning on the level. But to recap, and I've said it a million times, but I'll say it again, you need to decide whether you want to keep some warmth and stay lighter and brighter, or you really want to be as cool as possible, but it will look deeper and darker. 
That's a fact, that's how hair colour theory works. If you're a hair professional, manage your client's expectations in your consultation, that's a lot to say in one sentence, to make sure that they're clear about, or you're clear as well about exactly what it is they want, listen to what they've got to say, and if they do want to be as cool as cool as cool can be, then they need to understand that that is going to mean they will look darker. And if you're doing your hair at home, exactly the same rules apply. There's lots more hair colour theory videos here on my channel. They're all in a playlist if that's what you'd like to kind of, you know, have a look at. There are lots of things separated into different playlists. There's bleaching playlists, there's a Shazy Q gloss playlist if that's what you want. There's hair cutting, razor cutting, there's lots of different stuff here on my channel. And please remember, you leave me a comment and I will always, always get back to you. And there's a whole playlist of shop up videos if you're really into knowing what the formulas are in the drug in the drug lists, in the drug stores, in the chemists, etc. etc. There's even one that's on box dye. Huge thank you for if you got to the end of the video, huge thank you for watching this. I really appreciate all of you guys. You really are amazing and I'm so grateful that you come here to watch my content. You all take lots of care and I will see you all in the next one. Mm -hmm.